All right, this is fifth grade, module six, lesson 16. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue studying the patterns found when we analyze the coordinate pairs of two lines that are perpendicular. Uh, again, keep in mind, this seems to be a little bit beyond the scope of the, the classic common core fifth grade standard. So if time is running short or your students are really struggling, the scope of this is really to locate points on the grid, understand perpendicular parallel lines, those kinds of things. This analyzing part and of per, the analyzing the coordinate pairs of perpendicular lines seems a little bit beyond the scope of the standard. So take that uh, into consideration. Let's get started. All right, suppose we have these two points, this line segment right here, we've got a point 0.25, we've got a point at 6.3, and we want to create a line that is perpendicular to it. All right, so the first thing we want to recall is that we, we want to remember that we have, you know, this slope triangle, this right triangle right here, and in order for us to find where this other vertex, uh, vertice, this other point is going to go, we're going to take this slope triangle and we're going to slide it and then rotate it so that it's going to look like this. So in where, uh, well, it's going to look like this. Three, four, and then it's going to go up, four, four. And so basically you have your, yikes, right there. You have your little slope triangle right here. And then we wrote, brought it over here, and then we rotate it, right? And I got stuff moving all over the place. Yikes! And so, so you've got your slope triangle right here, then you've got your slope triangle right here, and that tells you that your point is going to be right here. And the thing that we've been learning is that there's going to be a cute little pattern here, that this it has a distance of 2, and from this corner to this point, has a distance of four. So you've got this little two, four, and then we've got another little distance of two and a distance of four. And so we're gonna see that two, four, two, four pattern going on right here. And the idea is that tells us that this line right here is perpendicular to this one. Why? Well, because remember, these are the same triangle, just this one has been rotated and slid over. You've got two acute angles, and we know that these two acute angles add up to equal 90 degrees. And so you've got the, like the bigger acute angle and the smaller acute angle. And we have, if here's the smaller acute angle, and then here is a copy of the bigger acute angle. So these two angles right here equal 90, which means this is also 90. So there you go. There's our, there's our um, 90 degree angle, so we know that these are perpendicular. So let's look at the vert vertice. What's the coordinate pair of this point right here? I keep calling it a vertice. It is a vertice because it's a one of the corners of a triangle, but really I should call it a point. So let's look at that point. And what is the coordinate pair? Well, it's 8, 7. All right, it's 8, 7. Okay, so now the cool thing is if we compare, let's see, Two, five, like think of this as the corner. Six, three is our corner, right? And if that's the, like the place that we're gonna compare everything with. So we're gonna go, okay, that's six, three. And then let's take this point and let's just write it right here, two, five. And then this point, let's write it down here, eight, seven. All right. Now here's the thing that is kind of an interesting thing that we're gonna notice that from 6 to 2, that's a difference of 4, and 3 to 7 is a distance of 4. And then, similarly, from 6 to 8 is a distance of 2, from 3 to 5 is a distance of 2. And we're, we're going to see this little pattern here. The thing is, it went 4 down, this goes 4 down, this is 4 up, and then this is 2 up, so this is two, um, oh, this is two up, and this is also two up. Interesting. So that's the thing we want our students to notice. Look at the pattern. So going down, so the six to four, two is down four, but this is up four. 
But then here, the this is up to, and this is up to. Very, very interesting. We're going to look to see if that's a pattern that happens every single time. This. Whoa. So, a lot of stuff going on here. First, we're going to draw PQ. And that's going to be right here. There's our PQ. Then we're going to plot 3, 8. So, 3, 8 is going to go right here. There is our 3, 8. And we're supposed to label that R. So, I'm going to label it R. And then we're supposed to draw the line PR or RP, same thing. Now, how are we supposed to prove that this really is a 90-degree angle? How do we know without measuring it? Well, let's look for our triangles. So here is our triangle right here. And then we see the other triangle right here. And the thing is, we should see that that's a distance of 1, and this is a distance of 4. Right here is a distance of 1, and right here is a distance of 4. So there's that classic pattern that we've been seeing. That's 1, 4, 1, 4. So it's alternating again. And that's because the same triangle is being rotated, and that's why it's 1, 4, 1, 4. Good. So there, that's how we know that it's a right angle without measuring it, because the triangle can be rotated, and it creates that 1, 4, 1, 4 pattern. Now, if we wanted to compare the coordinates of R, P and Q. So I'm going to put P in the middle. So P is 2, 4. 2, 4. And then I'm going to put R above right here. That's 3, 8. And then I'm going to put Q down here. So that's 6, 3. Cute little pattern that we're going to notice. All right. First, we go up one, we go down one. So we go up one, we go down one. But then, right here, from two to six, we go up four. From four to eight, we go up four. So there's our, our pattern. It's this classic pattern that's really interesting. So to go from two to three, we're going to add one. So I'm going to put a plus one. And then to go from 4 to 3, we're going to subtract 1, so I'm going to put a minus 1. But then from 2 to two to 6, and then 4 to 8, we add 4 every single time, okay? So there's the beginnings of a pattern. At this point, parents and teachers, we don't have enough information to really say for certain what our pattern is, but we're starting to see this is the second time we've seen this same kind of pattern uh, forming. Now, I'm going to skip the rest of these questions because I think they're self-explanatory. Now, this one, exact same issue, only now we're going to have fractions involved. So we're going to start by drawing CB, and I don't know, my issue with CB is I don't exactly know where this point and this point are supposed to be. Um, I don't like where they're supposed to be, so I'm not entirely sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, and I don't know, so I'm going to put C, let's do it in blue so that we can be certain we understand. Let's put it here and here rather than where they are. So I'm going to see if I can erase um, these points because I don't like where it is. It's a little hard to tell, right? So I'm going to erase this a little bit. There we go. Much more better. All right, so now when I zoom out, good, it looks a little better. Okay, so we're going to plot. First thing we're going to do is plot one-half and five-and-a-half. So let's do that. One-half and five-and-a-half is going to go right there. And there's our point. And sure enough, we can see that we have our right, what looks to be a right angle. Now, how do we know without measuring it? Well, here is our slope triangles and uh, when I zoom in all right so we automatically know that something has gone wrong how do we know that something's gone wrong 
Well, we know that something's gone wrong because this goes down by 3, this goes over by 3, this goes over by 3, but this is only goes up by 2. So we know that we're supposed to have an alternating pattern, either 3, 2, 3, 2, or maybe it should be 3, 3, 3, 3, because it's still alternating, right? So we know something has gone wrong with the figure as drawn uh, because we don't know. So I had to fix those dots a little bit. So parents and teachers, I'm going to leave this as is, and I want you guys to point out to your teachers if they've assigned this problem that we can't really solve it as is because those dots weren't were really where they should be, and we know that something's a little goofy because we're not seeing the 3, 2, 3, 2, the alternating pattern that we should be expecting. All right, so here we've got two points, S and T. S is located at 2, 3, and T is located at 9, 6. And we've got this little line, and what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to give, coordinate, um, give the coordinates of a pair of points such that the new line, UV, is perpendicular to ST, remember? And that's what that un upside down T stands for. I'm going to tweak the directions a little bit, and I'm going to say, well, let's just shoot off a point from T so that the new point and T, not U and V, so uh, U and T, let's say, make a perpendicular line to S and T. So I'm kind of tweaking the directions a little bit. So I'm going to take our little slope triangle, and you'll notice, remember, our slope triangle has two acute angles, so I've got the bigger acute angle here. I'm going to bring the other slope triangle, and I'm going to go right there. So now, remember, I have the bigger acute angle and the smaller acute angle kind of on that same line. So what did I create right here? I created a perpendicular line. So this guy right here is perpendicular. And so what point is that right here? Well, that point right there is going to be, okay, so we know that this was 9, 6, right? And remember, this right here is a distance of 7, so I'm going to do this in, uh, let's do it in purple. So this is 7, this is 2, this is 7, this is 2. Alright, so we know that it's going to be perpendicular because of that beautiful pattern, 7, 2, 7, 2. And so now, where is this location? Well, if this is 9, 6, and we know, oh, wait, wait, that's not 2, that's supposed to be a 3. 9, 3, I mean 7, 3, 7, 3. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. All right, so we know that it is currently at the x value. The x coordinate is 9, but we know this is going to go backwards 3. So this x coordinate right up here is going to be 6 is the x coordinate right there because it goes down and we drop down to 6, right? And now, <clears throat> but what is the y coordinate? Well, we started here at the y coordinate being 6, and then we went up 7. So 6 plus 7 is 13. So we know that this point right here is 6, 13. And we don't need the v at all. Now let's go back and let's take a look at the at the pattern. So we know that we've got 9, 6, we've got 2, 3, and we've got 6, 13. And so the idea is we should be able to see a pattern. And sure enough, we see a difference here of 3. We see a difference here of 3. Uh, in fact, both of them are going down by 3. And then right here, we see a difference of 7 goes down by 7, and here it goes up by 7. And so, once again, we see that beautiful pattern, so we know that we are right. We know that we have located the proper point.
And that wraps up fifth grade module six, lesson 16, constructing perpendicular line segments and looking for the patterns in those coordinate pairs. Parents and teachers, keep in mind that with the exception of locating points on a grid, that's important stuff. Um, this might be a little bit beyond the scope of the fifth grade Common Core standards.